Chalk Talks, I may have mentioned something about being a PCB rock star. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The truth is, though, being a rock star involves a lot more than laying down some mad licks with your ex. To be a real rock star, you need to have your tracks recorded and archived, your tours planned and coordinated, and all that administration stuff taken care of. Otherwise, you're just playing to hear yourself. Being a PCB rock star is like that, too. You can't just sit around all day making the world's most amazing layouts. <laughs> Works of art, really. <laughs> you also need to archive your work, manage and reuse your design data, and generally make sure that all of your master works are preserved. For all your adoring fans, of course. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. All of us, yes, even if we're PCB rock stars, need to manage and archive our design data. It's true. Luckily, my guest today is Jim Martins of Mentor Graphics, and he's quite the expert on the topic. Let's sit down with Jim and chat about how we can archive and manage our design data in Mentor Graphics pad system. Before we get started, remember to click the link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Jim. Back to Chalk Talk. Hey, it's great to be back here. So, Jim, let's talk about archive management. Uh, what is it and what are the challenges involved? Okay, well, let's start with an overview of the topics we'll cover today. Great. We'll be talking about reusing and improving information, increasing communication, collaboration, and maximizing the value of your most critical intellectual property, your design data. Great. We'll also discuss the challenges you'll face and how PADS helps designers overcome these challenges. Okay. There are a number of approaches companies have taken with archive management. PADS has taken the specific approach to focus on management, use, and improvement of your design data. Let's take a look at a few studies. In this first one, you'll see that improving communication and collaboration is considered to be crucial as the best-in-class strategy for improving PCB design. Uh -huh. In the second chart, reusing PCB data is also considered critical for being best-in-class. Lastly, design data is considered to be the most critical part of your intellectual property. It's no accident that PADS is focused on your design data. Right. Often solutions to data management are hard to set up, difficult to manage, and overly complicated. With the PADS easy to set up, easy to use, and easy to maintain approach, you are provided the right balance of usability and power to get your job done. Great, okay. We'll explore how your designs are central to everything you do in archive management from PADS and how this provides you the greatest value. Fantastic. Think of the thousands of hours of effort you've put into creating your designs. I know, really, that's true. And a key element of success is reusing that knowledge and data. PADS help you do both efficiently and effectively. Fantastic. You can share your knowledge with others by annotating your designs with text and notes using redlining and markups. With PADS, you have unequal control for sharing your ideas and expertise. But what do you think drives the need to archive? Well, the short answer is to back up and manage your data. However, design-driven archive management is much more and addresses the entire creation process. Mm -hmm. Design-driven storage is paramount toward efficient and effective backups of data. It increases productivity by efficiently creating, indexing, and restoring archives within a vault that is transparent to you. You have the ability to quickly and easily search the contents of the vault based on archive names and user-defined descriptions. Cool, okay. These elements can be restored or compared against other archives, which significantly reduces the risk of error when reworking or starting a new project from existing data. We know that design is an iterative process involving many areas of expertise. Very true. Design-driven archiving helps you create prototype release points and analyze and store data for reducing respins. Very good. The format provides robust graphical preview, redline, and markup capabilities, reports of project data, and reduces costs by eliminating the need to consume licenses of the authoring tools. This environment is a simple interface with engineering tools that ensures exact design intent is accurately captured, available, and traceable during later reviews. Great. When creating an archive, you can use a template to set all the fields for a specific project. Templates specify the name of the schematic project and layout projects if present, additional files to archive, and the name and text description for the identification. So what kind of design data can we archive? Well, you have the choice to archive any files that you choose. Archive data is not limited to design data. Okay. While the contents of your archive will naturally include your schematic and PCB files, you can optionally choose to include libraries, reports, CAM data, and any additional files that you wish. Okay. 
Padge Archiving gives you the ultimate flexibility to ensure your critical data is stored safely and securely. Very good. Okay, so I've decided what I want to archive. I'm archiving away. Now, what can I do with the information once it's archived, Jim? Well, you can quickly and easily search the contents of the vault based on archive names and user defined descriptions. Great, okay. These elements can be restored and compared against, which significantly reduces the risk of error when reworking or starting a new project from existing design data. Sure. You can compare netlist and design data with two schematics. Okay. Netlist data graphical comparisons can be made between two PCB files. Okay. Also, netlist data can be compared between a schematic and PCB file. All right. With any design objects, engineers can generate a netlist comparison report. The report can identify differences between components, component pins, component names, net names, net name differences with identical connectivity, and component pin connectivity differences. Okay, cool. There are two options for comparing data. Specific data instance comparisons can be made, or you can compare major groups of design data. Data reports can contain component placement, component attributes, test points, vias, drill holes, traces, layers, net names, pins, placed and unplaced probes, tooling, and fiducials. Okay. While many tools provide comparison using only text, PADS has graphical PCB comparisons allowing you to interactively select which layers you wish to check. A comparison report with hyperlinks to differences allows you to quickly zoom and view combined images from the separate designs. Very nice. In addition to comparing two active designs, you can compare your active design against your archive data. Can I extract data from my archive designs, and, and what can I extract? You absolutely can. You have several report options. Reports are viewed on screen okay. and can be saved to the vault, or you can print for them. Okay. You can also print your reports to a PDF printer driver for separate storage and sharing. There are four valuable reports giving details about your design. The design summary report lists general information about boards, drills, vias, nets, components, lamp patterns, and so on. Additional information such as total number of PCB layers, total components, and which geometry has the largest pin count are included. Okay. The placement report generates component placement data. Line lengths and widths are listed by the line length report. Okay. And nets, pins, and connections are contained in the net list report. Fantastic. So how difficult is it to set up and use? Once my design is archived, can I update it or make changes to it? Archive management couldn't be easier to set up. Okay. It's installed automatically with pads. There are no special databases to create or configurations required. When you choose to create a vault, the system will automatically install and configure an environment that will manage the archive design data, index the archive name and description, and provide access to the project working folders. Cool. Okay. Unlike competitive products, PADS archive management can be installed standalone. You don't need to have your schematic or PCB design software available to enjoy the benefits of this tool, with the exception of editing that design data. Cool, okay. Archive management is also extremely easy to use. It uses a streamlined, menu-driven, graphical user interface with tooltips and the ease of use familiar to PADS users. With a few simple clicks, you can edit your design and resave it to the archive. So, my board designs are pretty graphics intensive, Jim. What kind of graphical information is available to me? Good question. When you use archive management from PADS, you have the benefit of powerful previewing capabilities. Ah. The schematic and PCB previews have display controls similar to viewing your designs like zoom, change layer colors, change layer visibility, okay. and control the display of component names and net names. Individual schematic sheets can be easily selected for viewing, including hierarchical blocks. Layout graphics provide controls to set translucency to view the multiple solid areas on the board or just the outlines. Okay. Not only can you view your schematic and PCB, but you can also query the data. Just hold your cursor over pins, traces, and other items to graphically display information including net names, pins, pin numbers, reference designators, and more. Okay, cool. Schematic and PCB previews are far more than pictures of your designs. They also interact with each other. Similar to viewing design data in the PCB and schematic tools, you can preview both together in archive management from the same archive and cross-probe between them. If you select an item in the schematic during cross-probing, your layout session can zoom into that selection. If a PCB element is chosen in layout and has multiple matching items in the schematic, such as an instance with multiple gates, a dialog will appear allowing you to choose which gate you zoom to. Great, okay. So, can I add any comments or notes to my archive design? Absolutely. You have several ways to add comments to the archive. Redline is the process of adding lines, text, and notes to design to indicate comments. Redline and pads allows you to add notes, 
views, line items, and measurements to the schematic or layout to communicate design issues. Red line information is organized by topics. Topics contain issues, and issues contain views and or markups. Okay. Redlining line items are defined by various shapes. Some items support the addition of descriptive text, color, thickness, and arrows. One red line element consists of dimensioning to provide the ability for measurement. Okay. We're all familiar with leaving a sticky note on someone's computer to get a point across quickly. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> red line and pads allow you to add the sticky note with your text and design for highly visible annotation and markups. Cool, okay. When creating a markup of your design, you can optionally associate the markup design elements, including components, nets, boards, and the note appears in a summary window for redlining for quick access. Cool, okay. This capability allows greater accessibility and reference with the design and upon associating a design element. Yeah. Redline data is saved to the vault for future use. Once the data is saved, a collaboration text history report displays to show all the redline data that was added. Icons next to the schematic and PCB change to indicate the addition of redline data. Okay. Archives can contain name and text description for annotation and searching. Very cool. Okay, Jim, I think I might need a recap here. Let's go back over some of what we talked about today, if you don't mind. No problem. So the takeaways from today's presentation are archive management easy to use and effective with pads. With a high focus on the design, you not only archive your data, but gain high productivity features such as creating templates, comparing designs, and generating reports. Advanced graphical capabilities of PADS archive management allows you to view your PCB and schematic, see differences between different PCB designs, initiate queries to identify properties of various design elements, and cross-probe between your PCB and schematic without the presence of your design tools. Okay. Redlining and markups visibly communicate design changes and information to maximize knowledge sharing. PADS and Metrographics delivers this functionality and much more. If you want to try it out yourself, go to this link for our virtual labs or to download the full ES Suite and try it on your own PC. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for joining me again, Jim. And thank you for having me. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com. <laughs>